Error handling is a core part of writing reliable Rust code, and the result type is at the heart of it. In this video, we'll break down what the result type is, when to use it, and best practices to make your error handling clean and efficient. We'll also cover some useful crates that can simplify working with the result type in real world projects. By the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how to use result effectively to write safer and more robust Rust applications and libraries. The result type is an enum used for handling operations that can either succeed or fail. These type of operations have a level of uncertainty. They won't succeed 100% of the time. Errors occur and they're completely unpredictable. Rust opts to handle this unpredictability explicitly through the result type. Its definition in the standard library is an enum with two variants, OK for success and error for failure. Within each variant contains a generic type, meaning you can store any variable type within each, but there are some good practices to follow, which we will cover. Let's start with a quick example. Say you are making an API request for some data. When you do this, there may be all sorts of errors that occur. You may lose your internet connection. The API server could go down. We could receive an invalid response, etc. This unpredictability makes this perfect for the result type. If we didn't handle this uncertainty, eventually the API request will fail and our program which uses this variable will crash because it incorrectly assumed that this variable held valid data. This is not a resilient and secure program. So let's first define the different types of errors that occur. Typically this list would be much longer, but let's keep it short for the example. We add this derived statement simply so we can print the error. We then define our response type and finally our API request function, which returns our result type. The first type argument we give it is the type of any successful response. And the second type is the different types of errors we expect. Then we create our main function, which calls the API and stores the result. And lastly, we define our match expression, which explicitly handles any response from the API. If we receive a successful response, we print the data we received. Or if we receive an unsuccessful response, we also print the error. This clear handling builds resilience into programs and significantly reduces runtime errors. It's important to note that this type is used almost universally in API requests, IO operations, and data passing, as these operations can and do fail. Let's now cover some best practices to ensure you use it properly. One of the best features of the result type is the question mark operator, which causes any error encountered to propagate. What this means is that if an error is encountered within the current function, it will immediately exit and return it. Let's demonstrate this with an example. Here we have a function that makes two API requests and the function should only return OK if both requests succeed. We make the first API request and add the question mark operator to the end of the function call. If this function call fails, we will immediately exit get API data and return the error that was found. Although if that doesn't fail, it continues on and makes the second API request. Once again, if that fails, the function will exit and return the error. But if they both succeed, we simply return both API responses. Simple, but it's important to note that this operator massively reduces boilerplate. Without it, our code would look like this, and we would have to manually check each result. Typically, you will want to avoid using unwrap and expect, as these methods cause your program to panic if the result is an error. It's okay to use them when running tests or quick prototypes, but typically these should be avoided. It is common for libraries and applications to define their own custom error types, which is great for explicitly handling different types of errors. Let's quickly demonstrate this. So here we've defined our own error type, a function that returns a result using our custom error type, and then a match expression that handles the different errors separately. This is very powerful because we can choose to handle different types of errors differently. We may want to try and recover from some errors and others we would want the program to exit. But this can be pretty cumbersome and boilerplate heavy for applications that interact with a lot of different libraries. You wouldn't want to have to declare a custom error for everything you encounter, which leads me into the next section. Rust has some really powerful libraries to improve your experience of working with result. The first library, Anyhow, attempts to resolve the issue of having to declare too many custom errors for your project. There are a few caveats in order for error types to be compatible. They must implement the send and sync traits, 
but fortunately most libraries do this, so it usually isn't a concern. To demonstrate how this crate works, we have this snippet that is interacting with a lot of different libraries. Don't worry too much about the content, this is simply to demonstrate the anyhow result type, which is what our function returns. Notice that we can use the question mark operator throughout for functions coming from different libraries. This is the power of the anyhow crate. We've done nothing to accommodate these different error types, but instead anyhow has abstracted away the need for us to create custom errors, and we can simply return a single result type. We can also handle specific errors separately if we want to. For example, here we are downcasting, meaning we attempt to convert the anyhow error into the request error type and add custom handling for it. This is a great way to develop applications that interact with a lot of different libraries because it saves you from having to declare all these custom types. This error is a crate that helps you to find custom errors, which is especially useful when building a library rather than an application. Here we've defined a custom error type. We use derived macros to tell this error to automatically generate the necessary trait implementations for us. Each variant in our error type represents a possible error in our library. Above each variant, you'll see an attribute like this. These attributes tell this error how to format the error when it's printed. Without this crate, we would need to implement a variety of additional traits, adding a significant amount of boilerplate, and our code would look more like this. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped your understanding of the result type. And let me know in the comments if there are any Rust topics you want to know more about.